Let's do every single type of mission in Elite Dangerous, part 4. I've decided that I need Cytos Scramblers on my ship. Those are power weapons, meaning I'll have to do few power play missions. I don't really consider power play to be a part of this challenge. It's all going to change in few weeks anyway. But I have no choice if I want those absolutely overpowered burst lasers. And I do. So here we go. There are no systems marked for expansion for Kumo crew. There are no pockets of resistance to combat. So I have a choice of delivering contraband or collecting slaves. Either way, I'll have to get me a hauler ship. My Python Mark II will have to do. It's my only ship in the bubble with somewhat bigger storage. And I don't feel like buying another ship just to move some cargo a few times. To get access to the Cytos, I have to be at level 3 in rank, given at 750 merits. To get some, I've decided to move some slaves. I've came to the 34 Pegasi system, where from the power contact I have taken 10 slaves. She would not give me more until I've waited 30 minutes, or paid her a bribe to fast track to the next quota of 10 slaves. After repeating this process few times, I was ready to move. Karma, the system I was to deliver slaves to, was only one jump away. That's what I've chosen to move people over contraband. It was closer. When docked at Harma's starport, my power contact took the cargo from me and I was free to go back to 34 Pegasi for another batch. That's how this loop looked like. Now I had to repeat it. With this ship about 9 times to reach 750 merits. In the meantime, let's see what Ted, who's doing this challenge with me, is going to pick. I bet whatever it is, it's going to be more interesting than my task here. Ted picked regular theft. He had to steal ship schematic from Morsey chemical installation. Ted is feeling confident, I see. We have a deal that he will do only missions meant for beginners, as he is one too. Let's see if he can pull this off. Murzy chemical installation was located on OPP3, the same planet from previous episode where Saturn Pop concluded her life. Be prepared to see this planet often. Majority of settlements in the OPP system are located there. When Ted arrived there, he decided to keep low profile and avoid detection from settlement guards and... Uh, wait, what are you doing, Ted? I'm sneaking. That's not how you sneak around. That's how you sneak. Just use the rooftops. Nobody is going to bother you there. Ted cloned level 3 profile from technician through the window and was now able to access sensitive information, such as location and code to the industrial locker number 1, where the ship schematic was being kept. He had to get to the industrial building. When he entered there, Ted spotted a guard. Luckily, the guard didn't spot Ted. By hiding from his line of sight, Ted was able to avoid scanning and by extension deleting his cloned profile. The guard went to the other room and Ted was free to move to the loading area where the locker number one was. He entered the code and grabbed the ship schematic as well as a random databank that was also in there. You and me and all other commanders are kleptomaniacs, so we cannot judge Ted for that. Now it was the most crucial part of the mission, Ted had to sneak out from the settlement without being seen. And he did, the mission was a success, though the execution was a bit nervous. Go ahead Ted, pick those suit schematics instead of influence. You earned it. Look what I've got, Cyto Scramblers! Well, with that being done, let me show you Ted how you properly do such surface settlement missions. Covert espionage. I have to steal surveillance logs from Shidozi's workshop without raising any alarms. Mission location was, you guessed it, on OPP3. This planet is categorized as icy body if you're interested. Shidozi's workshop was located on the side of the planet experiencing a night. Those settlements never sleep though, and there is always a shift working there no matter the time. I've landed my ship and I've proceeded to the command building. Backdoor wasn't guarded or patrolled, so I've just cut through the case to the door socket and overcharged it to open the door. 
I've needed to get to the security section. On my way there, I've spotted a technician with level 2 security clearance I needed. Casey Carlson was his name. I've cloned his profile and proceeded further. There was a guard on my way, so I've quietly disposed of him. After that, I've made my way to the security console and switched off settlement alarms. I've returned back to the outside to the terminal to locate correct data port from which I could download surveillance logs. Turned out it was back in the security section. I was just there. I've zapped the second guard, just in case he looked in my direction, switched off the authorization scans, just because I could, and I've headed to the data port. Now I could only wait for the data to download. I like how they build things, I guess. Alright, it was done. I just had to leave. See you later, Casey. This mission was quite similar to Ted's one. I think he did better job than me. He didn't kill anybody and didn't bother with the security console. I'm impressed. But in the end, this is the more correct way to do it. Well, that will conclude this episode. Thanks for watching, Commanders, and stay tuned if you wish to see more of this.